Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hopefully, you're all doing well. Welcome to this episode of the podcast with Jeff Barlow from Nimrod Outdoors. Jeff chronicles his adventures with his wife and seven kids going hunting and raising them up in the outdoors. And for folks that have kids, I thought this would be a great episode to be able to pick a guy's brain that is doing it successfully, bringing them up, uh, seven kids, and providing opportunities for each and all of them to grow. And uh, Jeff's a really good guy and has a really good platform. And I just wanted to share that with all of you. So hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. I look forward to hearing from you at the end, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah, yeah. So how's everything going on your end? Everything is great. Holidays went well. Uh, spent way too much money. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was great. Great holidays. And now we're back to the grind and back to work. And so. That's usually how it works. Kim and I promised each other, like, we're just going to buy for the kids this year. And then she ended up buying me this, like, cool camera gadget thing. And I stuck to my end of it. Actually, no, I bought her some gators, but that, you know, I didn't spend too much on those. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've done that in the past where we've said, no, we won't buy each other at anything. And uh, we end up sneaking things in on each other. And it's kind of fun. For sure. For sure. Well, um, so let's, let's get this thing rolling here. Do you want to start off with an intro to let people know exactly who I got on the show? Sure. No problem. Uh, my name is Jeff Barlow. And, uh, I'm the owner of Nimrod Outdoors and uh, been doing Nimrod for about three years now and it uh, started as, uh, <laughs> well, my wife and I had a joint Facebook account years ago and uh, she came to me one day and said she was sick and tired of seeing all my hunting stuff on our Facebook account. So you got to go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> so about that time. Um, I had been reading in the scriptures uh, where it talked about in Genesis, where it talked about Nimrod, the mighty hunter. Hmm. And so I thought, you know what? That's perfect. And uh, at that point in time, uh, I was looking for something to do to stay involved with my, uh, with my teenage sons. And of course they love social media and all that. So I thought, let's, let's start something. Let's do something. And so we started up a Facebook and Instagram and uh, started a YouTube channel and, just kind of, kind of, kind of, just playing with it and having a lot of fun. And uh, I think the message that that we're sending out there, um, the people are liking it. I, I I think they're catching on to what we're talking about and uh, and uh, what we're sharing, and they're enjoying it. So, yeah, I, I discovered you guys through your YouTube videos, and I I really I really like them. I'm I, I like the content that you guys produce. So I reached out because it seemed like your, your content was really based around the kids. Yeah. And, um, I was just like, I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. I haven't really seen that too much out there. And then, um, uh, the one that where the, I forget which kid it was, but he missed a mule deer. And then I think he shot the next one. He, Oh, he killed, he killed the next one he shot at. Yep. And, uh, I'm like, that was pretty cool. And so, uh, you have, you told, I think you told me, so you have seven kids. We have seven kids. Yep. Yeah. Six of them are boys. What what ranges are we are we talking about from age here? Our oldest is um, almost twenty one, okay. and then our second one is um, eighteen and a half. Um, then we have a fifteen year old, a twelve year old, a ten year old, a five, uh, an eight year old, and a five year old. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes! So, are they all into hunting? Uh, yes, even even our one daughter enjoys hunting. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. She was just in here saying, dad, I want to be in on your podcast. I'll record the whole thing. I'm like, no, oh. just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that would be uh, that'd be expensive if you guys have a good year drawing tags. <laughs> oh yeah. It can get real expensive. Um, my, my wife actually has um, 21 limited entry bull elk points in Utah. Uh, we thought for sure she was going to draw last year. Uh, she didn't. And uh, we were very lucky because I drew a once in a lifetime moose tag. Um, hmm. So it would have got real expensive real quick. <laughs> so, yeah. And so Utah, I didn't, you know, I have no idea about anybody that's ever hunted Utah. You're the first guy I talked to that's actually, you know, hunted there and lived there. And, and uh, uh -huh. so 
is there a lot of tags? Well, there's probably not a lot of tags because in Oregon, you know, we have, you know, probably half a dozen tags, maybe more that would take, you know, 20 years, 18 plus years to, to draw. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Utah's known for some pretty good size animals. I mean, you guys manage for trophy, don't you? Yeah. They're well, they've got quite a few units. Um, some of them, they manage for trophy and those will take you upwards of 20, you know, 20 plus years to draw. Hmm. Um, and then they have some that they manage more for quantity. Um, you can still get great animals off of those units, uh, but there's more opportunity for people. Um, and those, you know, you can draw them in, in nine or so years. Um, really? So they have some of both, uh, just depending on what you're after. Um, where my wife has now got 21 points, we're putting her in for the, you know, the, the top unit in the state. Uh, so that uh, so that she can draw that uh, big bull tag there. Um, the the one thing that uh, kind of irritates me with with Utah's um, the way they do it is as a resident, um, I can only put in for uh, one species limited entry. Uh, so I have to choose a deer or an elk or an antelope, and I can only put in for one uh, once in a lifetime at a time. Hmm. Um, so an out-of-stater can come in and they can actually apply for all limited entries. Um, and, and uh, you know, they can do it, an antelope, a, a mule deer, a, a bull elk, uh, and they can apply for all of them. But as a resident, I can only apply for one. And so it's like, That's why? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, with, uh, what about general season opportunities for you guys? Is there stuff that you guys can go hunt every year? Yeah, there's a lot of general season opportunities. Um, they, they have different, different things. You can, most of the time you can get a general season elk tag. Uh, the deer tags seem to go a lot faster and sometimes you don't get those in the draw. Um, and then, uh, they don't really have any leftover tags that you can pick up over the counter. Uh, but the elk, there are, um, there are, uh, open units where you can pick them up over the counter, uh, and hunt those. And they're, they're great opportunities. Uh, two of my good friends got those tags this year, those over-the-counter tags, and went out. One got a nice uh, nice five-point bull elk, and the other got a small little raghorn. Um, so, yeah, there's some great opportunities uh, just over-the-counter as well. That's interesting. Yeah, Oregon's more of a opportunity state. I mean, we have, like, a couple good units, and, you know, the wolves are starting to move in there. Uh, it's just, I don't know, man. After hunting Idaho, it was like, man, Oregon sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it does. I mean, I, I, I had a great year this year in Oregon, but, you know, the, the draw tag I got for my mule deer, um, I'll be getting that tag again hopefully soon because that was a fun tag. Cool. And then, um, I'm just kind of in limbo right now. I've got like six or seven elk points, and I'm like, do I, do I wait for, you know, like the Mount Emily kind of thing, or do I – do I just go for those medium range units? Cause I'm going to shoot the same quality bowl if it walks out in front of me in that mid range versus yeah. the high end. Cause I, I, you know, if I see a 300 bowl, I, I don't have that much self control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, the, the unit that's right here by our house, um, it's, it's managed more for the opportunity. Uh, there are still some, some awesome, awesome animals on this unit. You know, it doesn't take the, the 20 points to draw it. You can draw it with, you know, uh, 10 to 15 uh, points. Um, but we set up there as we're deer hunting up here and we watch, you know, 320, 330, 340 bulls running around all the time. Um, and so it's a great opportunity hunt uh, without having to wait, you know, 20 plus years to, to draw that tag. Uh, so there, there are those great units out there that, you know, you, you're looking you know, from a 320 to 340 is a great bowl, but you go to that, that next step up and, and you're looking 350 to 380s and, you know, sometimes pushing bigger. Uh, so, so there's some great units and there's some great quality units too. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, we're still talking 15 years though. I mean, that's, that's over a decade to draw a tag, you know, for, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd rather hunt decent units, you know, every two to three years and then I mean, have a chance. I mean, because if you hunt those decent units, there's still monsters in those units. You could always get lucky. Yeah, you, you just got to hunt a little harder and uh, look a little further. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Well, I want to get into a few things because, uh, 
with with having seven kids and a wife who hunts as well and you who hunt uh how do you how do you manage that how's that even work well we're broke most of the time <laughs> <laughs> you know that second that third job just to pay for the hunting um yeah. <laughs> no we we uh we try to uh to take everybody hunting that wants to go with us um had a young man a couple of years ago go with us that uh, that his dad wasn't able to uh, to take him out that year, uh, um, and so we said, you know what, come on, go with us, let's go. Uh, we were able to take him out, and uh, he spent the whole archery season with us um, out in the hills. Um, a great young man, and it was a great opportunity for us to be able to take him with us. Um, anybody that wants to go, we'll take him. We're we're game to take anybody. I love taking, especially the youth. I uh, love taking the youth out, introducing them to the uh, to the outdoors, and uh, my passion, uh, what what I'm here for, and what I like to do, and uh, um, you know, I, I tried to instill that same same passion in my in my children. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll, my my oldest boy that's uh, not living at home right now, uh, 20 years old, he's got that same passion, and uh, you can watch the little five year old uh, run around when we're watching a hunting video on YouTube or something and he'll be bugling like an elk, uh, a little <laughs> five year old. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just something that we try to teach our kids. Um, my wife and I, uh, to teach them about the love of outdoors and the respect for the outdoors and, uh, anybody that wants to come with us, we're, we're happy to take them. At what age can, can kids start hunting in Utah? Uh, they can start hunting at 12 years old. Uh, they have to go through a hunter safety program. They have to get what they call a blue card. Um, and uh, once they get that blue card, uh, they're 12 years old, they can start hunting. Um, so my uh, my 12-year-old will start hunting this year. Um, hmm. So it'll be his first year. Uh, his older brother that's 15, um, he's been hunting now for two years. And you saw one of the videos that uh, that he killed a nice, nice four-point buck. Yeah, he did. We had a, we had a great little teaching moment on that uh, on that video. Um, we crested the the ridge first thing in the morning, and uh, and uh, Jacob, my eighteen year old, uh, who um, if you're hunting with us, you want to go with Jacob because that kid <laughs> that kid can find animals anywhere. Um, he he has got the best pair of eyes I've seen in a long long time. Hmm. Uh, but uh, Jacob crested the hill before us, and he spotted the bucks down below us. Um, and there was one really nice buck. Uh, and if you see it on the video, it was just sitting there feeding. And, and uh, we tried to get Joey all set up. Uh, he was the only one with the tag. Uh, so we tried to get Joey all set up. And, uh, and uh, his heart was just a pumping, I think. And he couldn't <laughs> calm himself down. And his first shot, uh, you see it in the video, and it just – just barely clears the back of the, of the buck, just right over the back and hits the dirt behind it. And that buck spooks and he turns and runs. It doesn't run real far because he didn't know what was going on. So Joey gets a second shot and uh, misses it and it turns and runs again. And Joey gets another shot at it. And it runs and it ends up running over the ridge. And uh, Joey and I followed it over. Uh, we found it. It was a long, long ways away. It was a, uh, about 600, 650 yards out, uh, where we where we saw it on the on the opposite side of the canyon. And uh, Joey says, "I don't I, I don't feel comfortable shooting it that far," uh, which was a big choice for a you know for a 14, 15 year old. Uh, that's a that's a hard choice to say. I, I don't feel comfortable. Right. So uh, I was proud of him for that. Um, so we said, "No problem. Let's just." Let's just sit here and we'll watch it. We'll bed it. And once it beds back down, then we'll, then we'll go after it. Um, and as we sat there and watched, uh, somebody that did feel comfortable at 650 yards took a shot and dropped it in its tracks. Really? <laughs> so we watched the whole thing and we're like, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of a bummer for him, but it was a teaching moment about you know how, how important it is to, to get yourself calmed down and, and get your heart rate down. and take your breath and take your time and, and make the shot. And, uh, the second time, um, he made it count. He, he uh, followed his own advice and uh, made a great shot on a great little four point buck. And, uh, and the rest was history. Yeah. I like that episode a lot. What, what, uh, what gun were you using? How far was that first buck at? First buck was about 250 yards. 
uh, but oh, re- real okay. steep downhill shot. Uh, it was it was a tough shot for a for a fourteen year old, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he made a good shot, just barely went over its back. Um, but uh, the second shot um, was at about two hundred, you know, one hundred seventy five, two hundred yards, and uh, made a great shot on that one. And so right on. Uh, we were able to recover that one. And he's shooting um, he's shooting a three oh eight uh, was what he was shooting that day. So. I love that round. I've 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 harvested a lot of animals with the 308, and I've been using the uh, a uh, Hornady SSTs. Yep, and haven't had any issues. Never nope. looked back. You know, great gun, great load. I mean, that's it's it's a great all around uh, weapon for a kid. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm I'm really curious at because uh, you know, at what age do you start with a kid? Do you start <laughs> making it important? to where okay we're here to have fun we're here to learn but at what point is it okay well now we're putting meat in the freezer so yep. without putting a lot of pressure on because when i grew up you know um me and my dad you know bless my dad he gets he, we both get so excited or he used to get so excited when <laughs> I'd hear it, up and it would be shoot 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 and it sounded like world war three would go off i would <laughs> hit everything but the deer and, and it would it just was a complete shit show it just would go down the hill real quick and, <laughs> and so it, it I mean, how do you manage that? And then, you know, what ages do you start expecting more from well, them from actually starting to put meat in the freezer? You know, the, the thing that I've learned is they'll let you know when they're ready, uh, hmm. ready to move from from that little forky uh, that's off the side of the road that just gets them excited. And uh, yeah. uh, to, to, you know, I my 18-year-old Jacob um, – he'll tell me, no, I'm not interested in that buck dad. I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking. Um, and so they come to a point themselves where they will, will turn. Uh, I wrote an article uh, for the mule deer foundation magazine uh, a while ago. Um, it was called trophy hunter to trophy teacher. Um, basically it was my life cycle as a hunter uh, growing up, learning from my dad um, and then becoming a hunter of my own, and before I had kids, being a trophy hunter, you know, going after those big bucks. And then as I started having kids and started taking my kids out, I don't know about you, but have you ever tried to haul four kids traipsing <laughs> behind you while you're hunting? No. <laughs> There's no quiet in it whatsoever. So <laughs> to be able to sneak up on a deer during archery season, next oh, yeah. possible. Next to him. I was going to say, yeah, I could see getting it done maybe with a gun, and that would still be a challenge. Yeah, it's still a challenge, but you can do it. So, so it, was, it was an evolution of, of, of my life as a hunter, uh, you know, going from a trophy hunter to a trophy teacher and, and teaching my children about how to be a good ethical hunter and, and what you need to do and that kind of thing. Uh, so it was, a, it was a fun article to write. You know, we talk about uh, the things like, and I and I remember my dad saying the same things to me. Just be quiet. Stop talking. Or <laughs> watch where you're walking. And you're breaking every branch. Or you know, you know things like that. And uh, the the things that I see myself teaching my kids. You know, um, and and we talk about doing things to keep it entertaining. Uh, you know, those summer afternoons when it's hot. Uh, you know, you have great hunting in the morning first thing. Then you get those long summer days where it's really hot, and then there's some good hunting in the evening again. But during those long summer days, what do you do? Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we came up with a game where we'll set on a ridge so we can glass and see if we can find some bedded deer. But while we're doing that, we'll take the range finder out, and we'll pick out different objects uh, uh, away from us on the other side of the mountain, and one of us will range it, and the others will guess to see who can come the closest to mm-hmm. getting it. Uh, so not only does it keep it entertaining, but it also educates them at the same time. You know, they learn to, to, to judge yardages. Um, hmm. So, you know, just things like that to keep it fun and entertaining. And then uh, most of all, to, we t- try to teach them about uh, how to respect the, uh, the outdoors uh, and the, uh, the animals that you're pursuing as well. That's interesting. I know when you're saying, you know, if the kid will let you know if you're ready for when he's ready for this or that. And, and I was always ready for the big bucks. <laughs> I never had a problem telling my dad. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. And, uh, you know, I was, I, 
I was never afraid of eating a tag really. I mean, I was always, you know, and that's, that's something I, I struggle with when, when I go out and I hunt and I'm promoting, you know, hunting in, in my light and stuff like that. It's like, I don't want to just make it sound like it's all about killing a big buck. Cause that's, mm-hmm. that's really not what it's about. And I've, you know, I've had a few kids reach out, um, here locally that wanted to learn how to bow hunt. And, uh, a friend of mine took, took the kid out eventually. And the kid said, well, I, I don't want to shoot it if it's not a huge, huge buck. <laughs> and he's like, huh? Well, buddy, you're shooting the first thing that walks out if you're going with me. And, uh, it was just kind of interesting, you know, it was like, cause the kids never, never hunted and, and just, just had it ingrained in them big bucks, you know, from, yeah. from the media and it just, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm into killing, you know, bigger, older deer. It's just a different, you know, it's just a different experience than going out and just shooting a fork and horn. That'll let you, you know, get Correct. away with a lot more, you know, Correct. and, and, uh, what, how do you, how do you promote or how do you get around that from, you know, I'm sure your kids maybe watch hunting shows and stuff and all the time, <laughs> <laughs> how do you navigate that? And how do you instill in them? You know, if you want to shoot that little buck, that's fine. You know, if that's, if that's what your heart desires, but how do you do that? You know, I, I, uh, I talked with, uh, with a friend of mine, um, and a lot of people know him, um, his name you know, on social media is Muley Slayer. Uh, Mark Smith, um, and and he hit it pretty well on the head. You know, he's like, don't worry so much about those big bucks. Um, get your get your hands dirty. Get get them bloody. You know, release those arrows. Let them go, and practice those things so that once that big buck does step out, you're practiced. You're ready. You're 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 uh, refined. You know, instead of like Joey on that first buck, his heart's just a pound in and, and uh, you know, his eyeballs are this big. The more opportunities you give yourself, the more practice you give yourself, even if it's the little bucks, the better you are once you move into that trophy hunting and that big buck steps out. Because I don't care who you are, even me, 45 years old and have been hunting for the last, you know, 35 or more. I still get excited when I see a big buck. Yeah. I mean, there's no getting over that, especially if you don't give yourself the opportunity to practice. And so that's, I, I go with that philosophy like, uh, like Mark Smith was talking about and, and get your, get your arrow bloody, get your, get your gun, let it go, let it, let it bark, you know, take those opportunities to practice and learn and uh and get some get some deer under your belt before you worry about killing those big ones that's a that's a good perspective and and to elaborate on that a little bit more from uh from a guy that i learned how to bow hunt from elk with i talk about him all the time um you know i was like how do you get so good at killing bulls every year man like i couldn't i couldn't even find the average hunter here in oregon's like every seven years they get a bull and uh he's like i got really good at killing the cows (laughs) i was like hmm okay yeah (laughs) you know he's He's like, once you start getting into the herds and not just getting into the herds with no expectation of what you're going to kill, just the first opportunity you get, he's like, you're going to, you're going to learn real quick, the dynamics, you know, when, where, what, how, why, and that will lead you into the bulls. And if you start getting into the herds with the cows, he's a bow hunter, you know, yep. wow. Now, now there's bulls. And yep. he just, I thought that was real. That's something he said back when I was, I was still in high school and uh, that just stuck with me. And I was like, man, you know, if I'm going to get good at this thing, I'm just going to just, I'm just going to hunt, you know, yeah. I'm not. And, and that just kind of contrasts what you were just saying is like, man, that's really interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and, and if you do just get out there and get, get busy and get hunting and work hard, those opportunities that those big bucks will show up. I mean, Joey now, I mean, we, we hunt hard. We put our packs on, we get away from the roads uh, we, we hunt hard and, uh, Joey in the two years that he's been hunting, uh, he's now two for two on four, four points. Really? Yeah. I mean, the opportunities show up when, when you put the work in, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I killed my first four. I, I hunted for a long time and I don't think I've ever actually killed a straight four point black tail. I've always had like a, a four by three, uh, <laughs> you know, like a straight four point as like, man. And then now I have, you know, actually, no, I do have one. I go with my bow a couple of years ago, but, nice. uh, it was just, just getting good at killing those smaller bucks. I started getting really, you know, better at killing those bigger bucks. And yeah, 
you know, even my first, <laughs> my first mule year, I was so excited because I just knew it was a four point and I was like 16 at the time. And I'd been, you know, hunting since I was 12, trying to, trying to kill a big one. And well, I went up to it. It was a six by four. It had two tiny, tiny little cheaters. I was like, gosh, <laughs> hey, they count. So I almost saw those off, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they count, they count. It counts. <laughs> But so what are, what are some of the challenges outside of like, you know, trying to keep the kids quiet and stuff? I mean, how do you choose which one shoots first and all that stuff if you have more than one tag? Yeah, that's a, that's a good, a good question. In, uh, in Utah, and I don't know about other states, but there's age, um, age progressions, I, sh I guess you could call them, uh, whereas a 12-year-old uh, up through about 16, you're supposed to stay uh, within, you know, um, what do they call it? Um, Sight? No, hearing distance. You, you have to be able to talk to each other. Um, okay. Once you get over 16, you can go out a little bit further to sight and things like that. You know, uh, when you hit 18, you, you can go on your own. Um, so we've got a, you know, we've got my 18 year old. He goes on his own now. Um, we always work together. You know, you work this side of the canyon, I'll work this side of the canyon, what, what not. Uh, but he usually takes one of the boys with him. Uh, mm -hmm. He'll take he'll take the uh, the twelve year old that's going to start hunting next year. He'll take uh, Jace with him. Uh, they'll go one way, and then Joey and I will go the other way, so that Joey, as the young hunter, uh, is staying with me. Uh, and we're able to kind of split up and cover more ground and uh, do it that way, so that we're not all traipsing, you know, four of us through the through the forest together at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, we kind of go in different directions and, you know, you know, we'll have pre-designed plans. You guys go up this Canyon. We'll go up this Canyon over here. We'll meet at this point um, and things like that. So that does help now to have a, have an older one. Um, when they were younger, it was a tough chore. Uh, I tell <laughs> you, it was, <laughs> it was a real tough chore to take, uh, to take four boys with me um, and, and get out there and try to kill a deer. It, it really was, especially on the archery season. It was almost impossible. I was going to say, man, with a bow in hand, uh, you know, my dad used to, and I don't remember this, I was too young, but apparently he used to take us bow hunting and he'd have one of us on my back or on his back after we got tired of walking. And then when we'd see a buck trying to, trying to draw back with a kid going like this and just pointing and all excited, he's like, good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is it's really tough when they're younger, but, uh, you know, I still remember, I still remember as a as a young kid walking there with my dad and, and following him in his footsteps, and uh, and just that experience uh, helps grow that passion. Uh, whether you kill a deer or not, just to be out there uh, as a as a father and son combination uh, is pretty awesome. And uh, <laughs> to think that killing a, a, a killing a deer or, or harvesting an animal with with your boy there with you, that is a pretty awesome experience, but it holds nothing in comparison to being the dad and watching your kid take his first deer. Uh, that is a pretty awesome experience right there. I was actually going to lead into that because I'm like, and this is probably a question from, I'm asking it because I don't have kids. And if I'm sure if I had kids, I wouldn't have to ask this, but uh, how do you, how do you manage your wants and desires for going out and filling your tags, but yet you have seven kids and a wife to, to also, I mean, yeah. I imagine you still want to hunt and go out and fill your own. Tag. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, this year was, uh, was a little different. Uh, I did not have a deer tag. I did not draw a deer tag. And so I was, I was relegated to, uh, to, to film crew. <laughs> which was awesome. It, it was a totally different perspective for me to be on that end, uh, not having a tag and, and, uh, and working through it that way as the filmer instead of uh, in front of the camera and in front of the, the weapon. Uh, um, so that was fun. Um, but it, I don't know with, with, with uh, Jace, our 12 year old that's coming up, that'll be his first year hunting this year. Um, it's almost just kind of a, a an unwritten, unspoken thing that he gets the first opportunity um, without without question. Um, this last year, when it was just Joey and Jacob hunting, um, Joey had harvested a nice deer. Jacob's harvested a few nice deer. Um, 
but Jacob was still, let's get Joey, let's get Joey a buck and then I'll worry about me, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's kind of, everybody's pretty unselfish about it. It's kind of nice. That's interesting. It's funny. My dad and I go hunting now and, and he's just loves to go hunting for the experience. And he has always told me, and I don't know where he got it. Cause I know he didn't come up with it on, on his own, but he said there's, you know, the three stages of a hunter. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you've heard that and stuff. And, and, uh, he's just in the stage where he just enjoys being out there. He doesn't care if he kills anything. And then you have me, that's, yeah. you know, I, I'm looking for one of the biggest bucks on the mountain or one I'm happy to go home with. And, and yeah. so I'm pointing out bucks, I'm like there's one and then he, he just likes going hunting, you know, like over in Idaho, the buck that he shot, I passed up, you know, like I, it's like, it's right here, go, you know, go get it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, myself, I haven't, I don't think I killed a buck in three years. Really, the last one was with my uh, my twenty year old boy. Um, was about three or four years ago when we killed uh, back to back. Um, mm. I actually killed my buck, um, and he was um, old enough to go on his own at that time. Uh, so it was probably three years ago because uh, he's almost twenty one, and that would have put him at eighteen. So he's old enough to go. Um, so as I was as I was processing mine and quartering it up and getting it ready to haul down to the car. Um, he took off and, and went hunting, and uh, just as we were about ready to put all the stuff in our backpacks, he come walking over the hill, and I said, "What are you doing?" And he says, "We're tagged out." I said, oh <laughs> crap! Oh crap! We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> so we got a picture of us with uh, with both of our bucks on our backs together, standing there together, and that was a really cool experience uh, to be able to do that. Um, that that would be that would be. This is the first year me and my dad actually got to hunt together, and and um. I forget how long it's been. It's been probably over 10 years. I mean, with both of us having tags in our pockets, cause I'm a social, hunter. I'll go hunting with a bunch of guys. I don't care. My dad's like, I just want to go hunt with my kids. If I go hunting with anybody, you know, or maybe my uncle. Yep. Uh, and so that, that kind of just has kind of separated us going out and going and doing our own things. And then usually if we're hunting together, one of us has a tag and we're helping the other one out, you know, but, yeah. um, Man, but yeah, Idaho, Idaho was awesome. Just watching him get to, we were five miles deep and it was pain in the ass to get that buck out of there. But <laughs> it, boy, it, it was fun. It was sure fun to hunt together again. I'm mean, thinking about maybe making that Idaho trip, an annual, you know, father, son kind of thing. Cause it was way too long. I felt so bad. I'm like, man, it's I, I that it's a great hunt. That Idaho deer hunt. Yeah. And that, I can't and the third season, season Colorado. Right. Third season Colorado. I would love to get in on that one too. So, yeah, I, I, is that a general tag or do you have to draw? No, that's a draw tag. tag. Yeah, that's oh. a draw tag. But uh, uh, that, I've heard, I've heard that's an an excellent hunt. You know, it's um, late October, first part of November. They're starting to rut. You know, into mid November. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's an awesome hunt. That would be that would be. So, with your kids, how do you? I mean, you said you use a 308. I mean, mm -hmm. have you figured a good caliber to start them as they're younger and work their way up? Because I started with a freaking 270, and I wouldn't suggest that. I mean, I was that's, a. That's what I shoot right now. Really? Uh, and uh, my 18 year old, he shoots a 30 out six. My 20 year old shoots a 308. Uh, you know, we just have a different variety of guns uh, that, uh, that we can use. Um, but one thing that we go out as a family quite often and, and we'll go shoot uh, and we'll take, we'll take the, uh, the guns with us anywhere from, uh, you know, a, a 223, uh, 308, 30-06. Uh, for my moose hunt, I had a moose hunt this year um, and I, I was using a 300 Win Mag. Um, and as we went to sight that gun in, uh, we had everybody out there shooting and uh, I had my 12 year old, my 12 year old shot the 300 win mag. Um, my daughter, a 10 year old she she shot the 300 win mag. Um, my eight year old son wanted to, and I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to put him behind the 300 win mag yet. This has a, a break on it and everything or. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Was, I was like, man. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did have a break on it, but, uh, you know, the more you get them used to shooting them at a younger age, you know, once they get into the hunting, it's not a, it's not a big thing to them anymore. Uh, you get them, them comfortable with the firearm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say, don't, don't teach your kids anything about firearms are too little. They don't, 
and and we're more of a philosophy of teach them and teach them how to respect that firearm uh, as to what it is um, and it's not a toy you know it's it is it, it has a purpose and that purpose is to to harvest things um, and you respect it and you learn how to use it um, and that's a kind of our philosophy um, I've grown up when I was a kid my dad you know I got my first gun I think when I was four it was a 22 and that was you know a BB gun and then when I was four he got me my 22 yeah. and uh, you know from from my perspective just because that was the way I was raised it was like you know I'd rather have them be educated than curious yes you know, very like, much so very very it, much so curious is dangerous I mean yeah. so <laughs> But, and, and so I, you know, my brothers, it's kind of fun watching my brother raise his kids now. Cause they're, you know, I, they're at that young age where Hunter's going to start, uh, or, uh, Owen's going to start hunting and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. Hunter's, he's not even old enough, not even close to being old enough, but Oregon has this mentor program where you can give your tag to the kid and they can start, I think doing that at like nine. Wow. Yeah. And they never had that when I was a kid. That, um, that is awesome. It is pretty cool. I mean, I don't think my brother's killed a buck in a few years because he's been, maybe he has, you know, I think he's been killed a little tag away to his kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, is more worried about getting, you know, his wife, a a deer and, and stuff like that. So, and, and I totally get it. If I could give my wife my tag, I totally would, but she goes out and she fills her own, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, they, they had that mentor program they adopted that mentor program here in Utah a few years back. Um, and, and it's great. It, it's, it's a way to keep those kids. I mean, if you think about it, if you're a 12 year old or a 13 or 14 year old and, and you don't draw a tag for the first couple of years of your hunting, hunting career, yeah. and those kids lose interest really fast. Um, yeah. So to be able to, uh, as a dad, um, kind of pass my tag on to him uh, and let him uh, be able to harvest that animal, I'm all for that, all for it. That's crazy because yeah, Oregon, there's unlimited amount of general season tags. Anybody can go out and go buy a general season tag and go hunt a huge chunk of land. And it's like, so we don't, I, we don't really have that problem here. But then again, it's like trying to, trying to teach my wife how to hunt because she's still learning and stuff. It's like you run into these guys that, you know, I, I think I've talked about it before, but, you know, we, we just get not not friendly guys we'll put it that way they, they, they're they are there to i didn't think they're there to kill anything they're just there to screw other hunters over because we were like a mile deep out this dead end road that we parked at at 3 30 in the morning they bomb past us walk through the unit kick everything out of the unit to get down to where we were going to go hike and then once they see us get down there and i make eye contact with, with them they take down at the end of the unit kick everything out there laughing on the way out i'm like man you know like i wish be nice I, I wish Kim wasn't here. My, my hunting partner was here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> be nice, be nice. Be nice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, they kicked the buck. We were out, we were after out of there. I was like, mm-hmm. man, you never saw him again. She ended up eating her tag that year. Yeah. I was like, that makes it you know. tough. It no. does. It does. But you know, having controlled hunts, that still happens on controlled hunts too. I mean, yep. It's, you know, there's people out there that are just, they're ornery people. We'll just put it that way. They're just ornery people. Um, yeah. But there are some some people out there that are are just class act, top notch people that I have met on the mountain, and uh, I'll be friends for life with them. They're just some of them are just the salt of the earth, great people. I wish I could meet those ones. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just must have the worst luck, man. It's because like even when like even when we went going a Christmas tree hunting. I was like, man, if if my wife was not here, my hunting partner was here, we would be having words. <laughs> it's just any time I go out into the woods, my luck is so bad. And, and uh, well, my hunting partner was there, but his wife was there too. So we well, just kind of gritted our teeth and just yeah. Yeah, we we don't want to talk about Christmas trees. <laughs> yeah, two two years ago, um, we were out getting a Christmas tree. My wife slipped on some ice. Uh, it was just oh. after Thanksgiving, and she broke both bones in her lower leg. And oh, wow. she was in a cast. Well, not a cast. She was in a in a uh, what do they call it? <laughs> wasn't a cast. wasn't a hard cast. It was a soft cast. Uh, okay. She was in that for six weeks, eight weeks, while well, during Christmas and uh, after the first of the year, and 
And uh, that became a very, very expensive Christmas tree. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, well, did uh, you guys still take the Christmas tree home once you broke her leg? Did you guys at least make the time for? <laughs> well, here's this. Here's the quick story on it. We were going up the trail looking for a Christmas tree, and of course, we, you know, that's a nice one, and that's a nice one, and we just keep going up the trail, and we get up there far enough that I'm like, okay, we got to make a decision. Right? You know, we got to give back. What what one do you want? She goes, I think I like the very first one that we saw. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? So me and a couple of the boys ran back down the trail to go down and cut the, the first one and, and have it cut down and headed back to the car by the time her and the little kids got there. Um, we get back down to the area and I look at Jacob and I'm like, which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember. So we sat there and waited and waited and waited and it was taking way too long. So I turned around and ran back up the trail to find her um, hobbling down the trail on one foot trying to get down the trail. So we never even ended up cutting a tree that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't even do a Christmas tree this year. We were just too busy. My dad was like, you do a Christmas tree, kid. You do, you do a Christmas tree. I was like, all right, I'll do one next year. <laughs> this, this year, we were going back out to get our Christmas tree. and. Uh, it was the day before we were going out to get it that we planned to go out and get it. Um, my 12 year old boy, Jace, he crashed on his mountain bike and mm. broke his collarbone. Oh. And so now we have two years in a row revolving around Christmas trees that we have broken bones. And uh, it's a tradition we have got to stop. Yeah, just go to the parking lot next time. And yes. Just go there. <laughs> yes. So uh, another question here about, about you said you do the filming and stuff now, and, and you, obviously you're uploading onto YouTube. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what camera equipment are you guys using and stuff? Because the, well, the video quality was pretty good. I liked it. It looked like a, maybe a camcorder. Very good question. Well, as you know, with seven kids, uh, we're broke all the time. <laughs> we don't have that great of filming equipment. Um, and that's, a, that's, that's one thing I want everybody out there to know is you can do this with what you have. Um, I film, I would say, uh, previous to my moose hunt, uh, I would say I filmed 90% on my cell phone. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we had a little um, Sony point and shoot camera uh, that would do some filming with as well. Um, just before my moose hunt, I splurged a little bit and I bought me a, a nicer camera. Uh, I bought me a Sony AX53, uh, which is a pretty nice uh, camcorder. Uh, we filmed some of the moose hunt on that uh, and have used it since as well. Um, but really, most of our footage has been taken on my cell phone and that little point and shoot up until, uh, up until this fall. Yeah, because I, I could tell, you know, just by the way you guys are zooming, that it was a camcorder. Um, but I mean the, the video quality is really well. And, and I use, I see your phone scope shirt on there. Yep. Um, use I use phone tongue. scopes because I carry a DSLR and my, my, my DSLRs won't go three or 400 yards. I don't, yep. you know, a hundred is about as far as I can get with my <laughs> DSLRs. And, uh, so anything past that, it's really pretty much just a phone scope. Yeah. And, uh, the, what you can do with those things, man, it's pretty nice. And I see you have a galaxy S seven, according to the screen here. Correct. Those things have amazing cameras especially over an iphone those things have killer cameras they do you know i i've uh, looked at upgrading to you know to a new samsung uh, a, an s8 or an s9 and i don't like the video quality as well as this older s7 so i just stay with it really <laughs> yeah so huh. yeah the uh the, it's been a really really good camera um we uh we have the phone scope attachment on it all the time in fact that's right i just took it off <laughs> on there all the time um, and so you know we're able to, to uh, break out the spotting scope really quick and, and uh, put the phone scope on and get some good footage uh, when the when the animals are out there a few hundred yards um, even when you guys got the scope the rifle scope one yet we do have oh the, the, the scope vision no I haven't got that one yet but that would be cool to have yes. that would really really cool to have um, we have one that is a universal adapter, 
that would fit on my rifle scope, uh, but it would block the vision. I, I couldn't see through my scope if I was to do that. Uh, I'd have to watch my phone and, and do it that way, which would make it a lot harder. But uh, scope vision, I want one bad. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I don't. I don't even know what the price tag is on those things. But when I saw that, I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna buy you as soon as I get a chance." And I still yeah, have a bottle. list. That's on the <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that Christmas is over, I'm like, man, I should have told my wife about that. <laughs> <laughs> Slip that hint in there somewhere, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe next year. Luckily, I don't rifle hunt that much. But when I do, it'd be nice to, you know, show everybody. See, my crosshairs were. When it, never mind, they weren't on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do a lot of missing when I run a rifle hunt. It seems like I'm just, I need a bow. <laughs> yeah. You know, when, uh, when we were first starting to have kids uh, and we had a couple of boys, uh, people would always tell me, oh, it's okay. You know, boys are a lot cheaper than the girls are. The girls, you know, with prom dresses <laughs> and this and that. I'm like, okay, cool. But holy cow, boys are expensive. Yeah. You buy new bows and new guns and you have to, ammo and ammo and ammo <laughs> boys are expensive let me tell you uh, well especially when you get you probably get more doctor's bills with a boy you broke an arm bills and uh you don't even want to know what my food budget is oh <laughs> yeah um, wait you got like three teenagers in your house right in now? the house right now three teenage boys yep but we've had four at one time so yeah they're they are pricey I wouldn't even want to know, man. I, I go, we go through food here. Kim's on the keto diet, and that's expensive. And then I just, I eat, I just eat whatever. Just, and if I want to yeah. go work it off, I'll go to the gym. You yep. know, like I don't know. I need to get better on my diet. I really do. I, <laughs> I've always heard that you know your body's built in the kitchen and maintained in the gym or whatever that quote Ooh, is. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, it's what I've heard. That's and good. I'm like, well, maybe that's why I have such horrible, you know. <laughs> I need to get my butt back in the gym. It's It's been so hard doing all these podcasts and, and YouTube videos lately. It's like, man, by the time I'm done, it's like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know? So. Yep. Yep. Uh, you got to hit the grind, man. Just grind it out. It is. But so how do you do your editing? Do you do your own editing? I do my own editing. Um, for a while, I was using uh, free Windows Media Player. Uh, not okay. Windows Movie Maker. Sorry. Uh, and I was just using Windows Movie Maker. It was free, so I didn't have to worry about spending more money. Uh, I've mm -hmm. since upgraded to, uh, um, what's it called, Adobe uh, Premiere. That's what I use. I got the demo version. Yeah, so so that's what I use now is uh, Premiere. And so I'm learning some of the the things uh, that, that's much more, you got a lot more functions and things you can do with it over, over Movie Maker. Um, so I'm trying to learn some of those now. Um, but yeah, great learning curve. I love it. <laughs> what's your, which, uh, model are you using? I got 15 is the one um, I'm using. It's somewhere on there. 15 or 60. Yeah. Something like that. Mine's like, mine's probably three years old. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I, whatever I could get my hands on, you know? Yeah. I hear you there. I mean, it, I finally feel like I've outgrown it, even though I haven't used all the features on it yet, but mm -hmm. you know, there's things like watching some of my video or some of my, um, uh, the videos of the guys I watch where they kind of do these cinematic things. And then I'm like, I could, I could do that. And then I'm like, <laughs> so it's just really cool. Cause I'm like, uh, I'm the more I edit and the, and the better I get at it. I'm starting to figure out these little tricks these guys are doing. I'm like, you're actually not that good. I know what you're up to. <laughs> you know, like I, yeah. I'm catching, I'm catching on to you. You give me about another, you know, 50 years. I'll be where you're at. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going to catch you up. <laughs> but by so, then they'll have some wholly totally new program that uh, that I won't have any idea how to run and and I'll still be behind. Dude, I I tried learning how to use a Mac here the other day. My computer guy's like, try this. I'll give you a super good deal on it if you like it. And after like a month or two months, I'm like, I was back to using my computer. I was like, I can't do this. I I, I, I am not a Mac. Guy. Yeah, I use uh, I use a PC every day at work, and there's no way I could change from PC to Mac back to PC. Yeah. You know, it, no way. I, I couldn't do it. I, and, and they were using these like GarageBand and iMovie are like the easiest things to use. I'm like, dude, I couldn't even figure out how to up or how to edit and trim my videos on there. Like I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> and then I'm like, I spent three hours trying to do something I could have done on, you know, in 45 minutes on my computer, you know, that's right. That's it's right. It's not working, but you just got to stick with what you're good at with, with what you get used to, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and master it. 
yeah. So where's where's Nimrod going this year for uh, for filming and uploading content? Are you guys gonna try and make it into something? Yeah, we're we're gonna try to to, to blow it up. We're we've done the last couple of years. We've done uh, a springtime thing called uh, playing where they're laying. Uh, all about shed hunting. Uh, oh, so cool. We're out there playing where the sheds are laying, uh, going and trying to pick them up and find them. And so we'll do um, a series of playing where they're laying all spring while we're out shed hunting. Every time we go out, we'll try to uh, make a film of that while we, while we go. Um, and then, uh, then we'll be back. Kind of a vlog style. Yeah, uh, kind of a vlog style. That's what, that's, that's what we do. Uh, it's the easiest way to go with the kids. Uh, you know, they're, they're not all into that cinematic stuff and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> it, it's more of a vlog style, just, just us being us, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, comes summertime, we'll, we'll be out camping and doing some summer scouting. And then uh, back at it in the fall, hopefully we'll have a, a, a big bull tag here in Utah. Um, some of the other guys there um, that, uh, that we hunt with, uh, we have some good friends that we hunt with all the time. And, and uh, we're looking at maybe doing a, an out-of-state archery um, elk hunt in Colorado. Mm. Um, maybe we'd come up to your neck of the woods. That'd be kind of fun. I've got a few spots I'd love to take somebody, so <laughs> let me know. Awesome. I mean, there's uh, there's plenty of elk here, but I mean, <laughs> killing a big bull is probably not very likely. We'll put it that way. <laughs> it, hey, any, bull's, any bull's fun to kill. Yeah, if you're if you're willing to shoot a cow, I could you know just give me a couple of days, we'll get you one. <laughs> there you go. Um, so then we've got uh, we've got that we want to do. Uh, we want to. Um, we just put in for turkey tags. I haven't heard back from turkey tags yet, so we might be turkey hunting, uh, which would be a lot of fun. Again, Joey uh, was able to harvest his first ever turkey last year, and we posted that video up. That was fun. Um, and so, you know, we just got a lot of things to, uh, in, in the works, so it, it'll be fun. It'll be a good year. That's pretty cool, man. I, I really enjoy promoting, you know, other platforms that I think are, are doing things right, like you guys taking your kids out and when you told me you had seven kids, I'm like, I got to figure out how this guy's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet either. We're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> well, I really appreciate what you, what you do. And I think you're, you have an awesome platform and a YouTube channel, man. And appreciate if, it. If this can help you grow a little bit, then that's just icing on the cake. And, and, uh, I really appreciate you come on to the show. I mean, is there anything that, um, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of them are listed as Nimrod Outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, we even have a Snapchat. My kids wanted me to get a Snapchat. So we have a Snapchat, and you can look us up on Snapchat if you want to. Uh, <laughs> but I, mean, I don't have one of those. I've never had – I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't use it, but I have one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, we're on most of the uh, social media platforms. Uh, we have a website. Um, it is www.beanimrod.com. Uh, okay. and you can go on there and you can check us out. You can, uh, we have some apparel on there. You can, uh, you can get hats, shirts, hoodies, you know, good looking hats. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of a cool, it's like a, <laughs> like a stag mixed with a, yeah, it's kind of like a stag. Uh, okay. Mixed with a buck. Here, here's what it is. This is the Nimrod Delk. It's a <laughs> elk. We took the uh, we took the front end of the elk, mm-hmm. you know the front diggers, and then the top end of a mule deer, and we combined them. Uh, you know the, <laughs> the the world's definition, and and when you if somebody calls you a nimrod, most of the time people think you know you're screwed up. Yeah, you're a nimrod. Uh, so we took that screwed up. Um, definition and designed our logo to uh, to be a screwed up delk. <laughs> so that's where the, that's where the logo came from. I like yeah, that. That's hats, cool. shirts. Uh, we've we've done hoodies, and so you can go on there and get those and uh, support us that way. Um, that way, either our food budget isn't so bad, or our hunting funds don't have to be as much. So if you want to support us, great. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, hopefully you guys can go out and do that, man. And and Jeff, I really appreciate your time. I mean, it's I know with especially with having as many kids you do, giving me an hour was probably pretty hard for you. No, it's a pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a great hour. So, 
Well, is there any, anything closing that you want to say before we wrap this thing up? Um, take your kids hunting. You know, I, I, uh, I read a, uh, a little meme a long time ago that said, uh, uh, take your kids hunting so you don't have to hunt for your kids. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's very true. It's very, very true. You take them out there, teach them about the outdoors and uh, teach them about your passion and uh, they won't stray far from it. That's good. Well, and, and you know, if, if we want to keep hunting going, that's the future right there. I mean, I know that's fairly cliche to say, but I mean, it, it is absolutely 100% true. You have to be catering to the kids to, to get yeah. them into the sport. I mean, really. You do. You do. I told my boys uh, last year, I was 44. I said, I want to be doing the same thing with you boys and your boys when I'm double my age. And they looked at me, 88? You're going to be hunting? When you're I said, yeah, I want to be hunting when I'm 88. And they said, we'll just have to will you out to a point and let you sit there. I said, I don't care. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I want to get to the age where I have grandkids and I shoot something. I say, go get it, kids. And That's then, right. Go, go get it. I'll be right here waiting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, hey, you have a great night. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Hey, no problem, man. Talk to you later. All right, everybody, that's this week's episode of the podcast. Be sure to leave a five-star review with a comment so I know you left it. And uh, if you want to be able to support the podcast even further, go to www.patreon.com forward slash on point podcast if you want to actually support the podcast and be closer and gain exclusive rights to asking questions knowing what's going to be out before it's out uh you're going to have a really a lot of exclusive stuff coming with that and we're just sweetening the pot as we go so uh, any any amount gets you in right now if you're just wanting to support the podcast with a dollar a month i would love to have you if you want to do more like five to ten that's cool too so there's a lot of range you can you can choose your value of how much you want to you want to give the show a month and uh, like I said, we're just sweetening the pot as much as we can. And right now it's gaining you access to the show that you wouldn't otherwise get. So thanks, everybody, for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.